What's up, people? Good afternoon, everyone. How you guys doing? How's everyone? All good, all great. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hello, everyone. Can you guys all hear me and see me clearly? All good people. Good afternoon, Trisha. Good afternoon, Zed. What's up? Hi, Devar Pita. Hi, Trisha. What's up? Hi, Rohini. How you doing? I can't. Okay, that's a little too long. Anyways, what's up, people? How you all doing? How is everyone? How are you guys feeling? All good? All great? Yo! Zupa Atta, Tumi Jata... What? Okay, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm good, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Hi, Dark Noob. What's up? Hi, Janet. Hi, Aruna. What's up? I'm good. Yes, for sure. Well, I meant you. So guys, welcome to the session for the second part of one shot series of current electricity. So we should have changed this topic name to ICC in two shots because we were not able to complete in the first shot. So this is going to be the second part of this first of this chapter, current electricity. Today we'll be talking about EMF, terminal voltage, uh, internal resistance, uh, voltage drop, uh, you know, power, energy, heat energy is all the topics that we have for today. It's quite, going to be quite easy. And yes, we'll have quiz questions as well that is in the Mentimeter. So yes, please open up your Mentimeter and keep it ready. I'll give you the code. Don't worry about it. And all of them are numericals. So you'll have to solve them by yourself. So be as quick as possible. Although you'll get enough time to read the question and answer it. But still, you have to be on your feet and try to answer the question as fast as possible. Right? Sounds good, people? Yes. Oh, come on. Every day you ask me this. Every day I'm going to see yes itself. Good afternoon, Ifaz. What's up? How are you doing? Hi, Anushri. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Now. So, people, let us now begin. The last two chapters of ICC. One is this and the other is radioactivity. So, we'll finish off this and then the next session will be for radioactivity itself. All right. So, current electricity in one shot. The second part of it. Now, remember, guys, we have already done what is current and current potential difference, ohms on resistance, combination of resistors, all of these all of these topics we have already done it so make sure that you watch that before you watch this one so if you are attending it for the very first time it's okay but make sure that you watch that as well so today we'll be doing emf and electric energy and potential and heating uh, effect of electric current and power ratings as well all right so let's begin yes with fire let's begin all right so let's start with emf which stands for electromotive force now, there are two ways to define electromotive force. For example, guys, for example, I'll just give you a basic example. Imagine that you buy a battery, all right? Uh, let's say that you buy that uh, normal AA or AAA size battery, which is about 1.5 volt. Now, my question to all of you guys is, if I connect that 1.5 volt while a battery to, a, let's say, a circuit, Will I get so much amount of potential difference also? Like if I connect it to a simple circuit, let's say a bulb, and I check the potential difference using a voltmeter, would I get the same amount of potential difference as that of the battery? Yes or no? Simple question. Tell me guys. So when school will ask about the choice of options, uh, Laveen, that's, I think that would have done, for ICC students, that would, that would have happened in 9th standard itself. Uh, by the end of 9th, you would have got to know. Anyways, guys, let me know. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yes or no? Obviously not. So whatever is the potential that is mentioned in the battery before connecting it to the circuit or before any current passes through it, that is what is called as the EMF of the cell. So that means that if I have a 1.5 volt battery, the EMF of that cell or that battery is going to be 1.5 volts itself. So before any current passes through the circuit, whatever is the value mentioned, that is what is called as the EMF of the cell, which is known as the electromotive force. This is one way to define it. Another way to define it is quite a little bit more technical. So for example, guys, imagine I have a simple cell. Now this is an electrolytic cell as you can see. So you have an electrolytic solution and then you have an anode and a cathode and basically you have these ions, positive and negative ions, cations and anions which are flowing through, freely through this uh, entire, what to say, this electrolytic solution and you've connected to a cell and you see that the current starts to flow. Now in this case, guys, 
if i want the current to continuously flow through the entire circuit i have to constantly maintain a potential difference yes or no guys if the current has to continuously flow through the entire circuit within that electrolytic solution and the anode and the entire circuit that is there i always have to maintain the potential difference across the anode and the cathode absolutely yes so you have to maintain that potential difference between anode and cathode only then the current will continue to flow because what is potential difference remember it is nothing but the amount of or the uh, work done to uh, po what to say move an uh, unit positive charge from infinity to a certain point so i have to constantly create a potential difference in order for the current to flow so imagine it like this guys imagine i have connected it to a simple so this is the battery now so i have a simple cell let's say that i have a you know uh, what to say a bulb connected to the other terminal all right yeah my lines and all are super straight now it is look at this guys so current is flowing through the circuit right now current is flowing through the entire circuit so what happens is that when the current is flowing through the circuit it will lose the energy that it has so what does the battery do is that the battery provides it with energy so it can complete one more rotation around the circuit and then again come back to the negative terminal so that is what a battery does a battery basically provides energy so in other words you can say that electromotive force or emf is the maximum amount of force that per unit charge one unit charge would attain so that it can complete one complete or we can go through go around one complete circuit that is what is called as electromotive force so there are two ways to define it is one is the what is it the electric the the electric potential of the cell or the battery before any current flows through it or you can also mention it as it is a maximum amount of energy that a battery can supply to a unit charge or the charge that flows through it all right clear people did you understand this did you understand i know right it's super straight i know i know can't help it i'm super skilled that way is it clear guys is it clear hi ananya yes 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 ananya go to change your phone is less it's all right it's all right no worries no worries clear, clear people so difference between electric potential and emf see da electric potential is what if you have to define it as nothing but what work done to move a unit it is exactly the same thing it is pretty much the same thing itself but when i say emf i'm talking about the cell or the battery so when i say emf it is before i connect it to the cell or before i turn off the turn on the switch what is the potential difference that the battery claims to uh, provide that is the emf electric potential is emf and electric potential is pretty much the same thing itself so electric potential is what the amount of energy or the amount of work done to move a unit positive charge from infinity to a certain point emf is the amount of charge or the amount of energy that a battery can give to a charge it's the exact same thing if you look at the formula the formula is like emf which is nothing but uh, epsilon is equal to what work done on unit charge is the exact same formula also so it basically when you define it you define it in a different way emf is pertaining to the cell alone when i say electric potential it is nothing but the work done on a unit positive charge there all right it's the exact same thing itself even the formula is also exactly the same all right so if you talk about electric potential we'll define it as v is equal to wyq that's the formula for emf it is epsilon is equal to wyq all right that's the only that is the only difference all right okay anyway so yes guys if you talk about the definition once again emf is what energy spent per unit charge energy spent per unit charge should take a positive charge around the complete circuit that is what i told you that is what is called as emf denoted by this greek letter greek letter called as epsilon this is called as epsilon so the formula is epsilon is equal to w by q and w is nothing but the work done q is nothing but the charge or right? the test charge the positive charge that we take now right, guys so that is what is emf now talking about the factors affecting emf emf guys super important so listen up carefully So EMF of a cell depends on two important things. One is the material of the electrode. What type of material are you using? Like for example, in your phones, you have something called as lithium-ion battery. Like in your uh, what to say, in your dry cells, we use magnesium oxide. So you have different type of electrodes being used. That is both cathode as well as uh, sorry, anode as well as cathode. So the type of material used is one factor that the EMF of a cell depends on. And secondly, is the electrolytic solution or the electrolyte that is used in the cell. So if we talk about a dry cell, it'll have uh, different types of chemicals. If we talk about electrolyte, electrolytic cell or an electrolytic a uh, solution it will have a different type of solution so the type of solution the type of electrolytic solution that is there that is also a factor that it depends on but what it doesn't depend on is the distance between the electrodes the shape of the electrode it does not matter whether it's rod shaped or if it's circular shaped that does not matter the distance between the electrode does not matter and the amount of electrolyte also does not matter whether it's 1 kg or it's 2 uh, kg or or 3 kg it really doesn't matter at all all it 
depends on is the material as well as the type of electrolyte that is used in the cell. All right. So these are the only two factors that it depends on. When you talk about the distance or the shape or the amount of electrolyte, it does not depend on that at all. So remember that there's a clear distinction between the two when you talk about factors affecting EMF. All right. So yes, people. Moving on. Now moving on. Moving on, people. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the terminal voltage of a cell. Now here's the thing, guys. Like I told you, like I asked you this question before, like if I were to take a simple cell and connect it, like let's say I take a 1.5 volt voila cell and I connect it to a simple circuit. Now the potential difference, if I were to connect it to a, let's say a simple bulb, the potential difference across the bulb will not be 1.5 volt. Although the battery claims to provide 1.5 volt potential difference, it will not be the case or it will not be the case. So what I'll get is somewhere around, maybe I will get around 1.2 volts or maybe 1.3 volt. So this voltage across the terminals of the cell, across the terminals of the cell, how much am I actually getting when current is flowing through it? That is what is called as the terminal voltage of the cell. Are you able to understand the difference guys? Is it is it clear? Are you able to understand the difference between terminal voltage and uh, uh, electromotive force once again emf is what the uh, emf is nothing but the voltage that the battery claims to provide terminal voltage is the the actual potential difference that we are getting once the current starts to flow that is what is called as terminal voltage got it all right all right chill that chill 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 all right okay anyways so that is what is called as terminal voltage so if you have to define it guys it is nothing but the terminal voltage is nothing but the work done Per unit charge and carrying a positive test charge. It's pretty much the, fir the first part is the same itself. Across the circuit, across the terminals of the cell. That is the only difference. Across the terminals of the cell. That is outside the cell. How much is the potential difference that I'm getting? That is what is called as terminal voltage. Denoted by the capital letter V. Again, the formula is V is equal to v W dash. That is nothing but the work done to move a unit positive charge outside the cell. So if I have a cell... And let me just use a different color. Hold on, guys. One second, one second, one second. So imagine, imagine I have a cell and I've connected to a simple, uh, let's say a bulb. So what is the potential difference, let's say, across these two points? That is what is my terminal voltage. So it is the amount of work done to move a unit positive charge outside the cell across the circuit, across one terminal to another. That is what is called as terminal voltage. Formula is V is equal to V W dash by Q, where W dash is nothing but work done to move a unit positive charge outside the cell. All right, it should not be inside the cell, guys. It should be outside the cell, all right? Not inside, outside. Because inside that would be voltage drop, all right? So outside the cell. Small mistake. Anyways, the next one is voltage drop. Now, here's the thing, guys. Now, it's very clear that if I connect a 1.5 volt cell, again, okay, let's go back to the same exact example, all right? If I connect a 1.5 volt cell, I am only get 1.2 or 1.3 volt. So clearly, there's a difference. Clearly, there is a small difference. There is there is some loss happening or there is some, uh, you know, there is some internal resistance, maybe the material because of the resist resistance or something of that sort. What is happening is that there is some voltage drop. That voltage drop that happens because of the internal resistance of the cell inside the cell that because the cell is also made up of some of the other type of material. So what because of that internal resistance of the cell, there is a voltage drop. There's a difference happening. That is what is called as the voltage drop. In layman term, that is what is your voltage drop. But again, if you have to define it, voltage drop is nothing but the work done per unit charge and carrying a unit positive charge through the electrolyte. Within the electrolyte, what is the amount of work done to move it? That is, if we talk about an electrolytic solution, that is within the cell itself, that is what is called as your what voltage drop denoted by capital small letter v formula is w small w by q which again work done uh, you know in carrying a unit positive charge through the electrolyte when i say electrolyte within the cell itself how much amount of you know work done is to be done to carry it from one point to another that is what is called as voltage drop all right guys okay let me just stop it right here i know i've been continuously going because i want to finish this off first people before i go any further ahead did you understand these three important terms super important that's why I'm, um i know i was not getting i was trying to avoid distractions and trying to finish the finish the point first of all guys once again just for all those who are still confused emf is nothing but see all of these definitions are almost the same there's nothing but the work done to move a unit positive charge itself so what is the difference between them Electromotive force or EMF is nothing but when I connect a battery, when I buy a battery, before I connect it to the circuit, before I turn on the switch, 
what is the potential difference that is claimed by the battery 5 volt battery 10 volt battery whatever the battery that i buy that is what is called as the emf how much of the battery claims to provide whatever the potential difference or the voltage that the battery claims to provide that is emf what you're actually getting because of uh, you know certain loss and everything what you're actually getting across the terminals of the cell what are you actually getting that is terminal voltage and finally when you talk about voltage drop that is there's a clear difference between the emf and what you're actually getting that difference that you're getting is because of the voltage drop and why is the voltage dropping or why is there a loss or why is there a, there's this uh, you know inconsistency because of the internal resistance of the cell all right clear awesome awesome this is the three things that i wanted to clear it now to talk about what is the relationship between emf and terminal voltage very important listen up carefully see guys work done for a test charge to both move inside so imagine i have a circuit imagine i have a simple circuit a simple bulb okay wow wow wow, wow. one second <laughs> all right wait <laughs> anyways so people my pad is all ah, anyways so yeah guys so this is the bulb i have connected it to the okay anyways ignore it so we will that is the thing the work done to move a unit positive charge both inside as well as outside the cell that is inside the battery itself and or inside the cell itself and on the, through the entire circuit that is this work done all right that is capital work done what w dash is nothing but the work done to move the charge outside the cell not inside the cell outside the cell in other words it's nothing but the terminal voltage outside the cell how much amount of work is done to move that unit positive charge that is w dash and small w is nothing but the work done to move the unit positive charge inside this particular cell all right clear i hope you understood this once again let me just mention it with a different color so here's the thing guys this both inside as well as outside the work done to move this unit positive charge that is my capital work done w capital w all right that is the total work done w dash is the work done to move the unit positive charge only outside the cell not inside the cell but only outside the cell and small w is the work done to move the positive charge inside the electrolytic solution inside the cell that is what is small w now what i'm going to do is is the total work done is equal to work done outside the cell plus the work done inside the cell yes or no the total work done capital w is equal to work done outside the cell plus work done inside the cell now what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide this by q divide this entire equation by q all right so what will you get w by q is equal to w dash by q plus w by q now what is w by q we have already seen that is nothing but epsilon that is nothing but emf and what is w dash by q that is nothing but terminal voltage and what is small w by q that is nothing but voltage drop so this is the relationship between terminal voltage voltage drop and emf of a cell simple simple equation you must remember this because you will be solving a lot of numericals as well if in case you have exams that is you know uh, conditioned whether you have exams or not if you have exams the yeah, anyways uh, you know for now icc has turned out uh, what is it decided to postpone the exam so until they cancel it until they have decided it you must remember this so epsilon is equal to uh, w uh, v by q capital v by q sorry v, v plus v small v and again uh, if you rearrange the equation you can get it as terminal voltage is equal to uh, emf minus the voltage simple all right guys now okay before i go in yes we have menti we'll do menti don't worry we will come to menti let me just finish on the topic first and then we'll come back to menti don't worry all right so the next thing i'm going to talk about is guys the internal resistance of the cell now people we have always talked about resistance but in everything that we considered every problem that we considered when we study we always considered the resistance that we externally connect to the circuit what is the resistance that we connect whether it's a rheostat variable resistance or normal resistor whatever it is that is what we considered but what we never took about or when we did the numericals we never considered what is the resistance inside the cell so the cell which is which you have will have its own resistance inside because obviously it has some impurities it is also made up of metals and it is it is also it also has an anode and cathode obviously because of atoms and molecules and all that when the electrons are flowing it will also experience some sort of resistance so that resistance that is provided by the cell 
inside within the cell itself what is the resistance that you get that is what is called as the internal resistance of a cell so that that is the resistance offered by the electrolyte inside the cell to the flow of current is what is called as internal resistance which is represented by small r all right the formula remains the same from ohm's law v is equal to i into r is the formula now here it is small v current is still the same and r would be small r so r is equal to small v by i would be the basic formula to get the resistance that is the internal resistance of the cell all right clear 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 clear, clear? understood hey listen da. listen first let's finish it off then i'll talk about boards and all that chill first let's finish this off and then we'll talk about everything don't worry all right so v is equal to i into r is the basic formula guys that's all right so v is equal to so v again see you're talking they're talking about voltage drop is so again there are few you know typing mistakes uh it's small v because they're talking about voltage drop so voltage drop is represented as small v small is small v is equal to i into r is the basic formula the next thing i'm going to talk about is guys the relationship between emf terminal voltage and internal resistance so all this while we talked about uh, voltage drop now we'll talk about internal resistance also again it's a very simple formula listen up carefully so total resistance total resistance inside the entire circuit is whatever is the resistor that you connect whatever is the resistance offered by the cell or by the circuit outside the cell and whatever is the internal resistance as well so r plus r capital r plus small r is the total resistance of the circuit that is both inside the cell as well as outside the cell as well that is outside the in the circuit as well whatever is the resistance that is nothing but r plus r now we all we also know that v is equal to i into r it's a basic formula that you already that we have already seen now from this formula we also know that v which is nothing but when i talk about the emf of the cell which we can represent as epsilon so epsilon is equal to what i into r is the formula so if i want to get current from this so what can i write i can write it as current is equal to emf divided by the resistance now here it is the total resistance because emf is nothing but the potential or the amount of work done to move a unit positive through the entire circuit both inside as well as outside so it will be what r plus this is the formula that i'm going to get so emf is equal to emf can also be written as what is that it is nothing but i into r plus r or you can write as current the total current flowing through it is nothing but emf divided by the total resistance offered by the circuit that is nothing but capital r that is the resistance outside the circuit and small r that is the resistance inside the cell as well make sense able to understand people able to understand hey listen 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 i know i know but i want to finish this off first as i can then uh, you know uh, because we have a lot to do so i will not be able to finish it off if i just keep on keep on talking that's why i'm trying to you know do this topic first and then whatever doubts you have you can ask me then i'll clear it don't worry relax i'm just trying to ignore those chats so that i can finish this off first all right so we have found that if if you just rearrange the equation what do you get so emf is equal to i into the total resistance all right now terminal voltage is what terminal voltage is capital v so again from ohms law we can write as v is equal to i into r that is the resistance outside the circuit right and voltage drop is what v is equal to i into r now this time the resistance inside the cell so i can write as small v is equal to i into r simple so so far i got that i got emf as what i into r plus r v is equal to i uh, i into capital r and small v is equal to i into r that is nothing but voltage drop now what i'm going to do is guys i'm going to use the first equation what we got before that is the relation between emf terminal voltage and voltage drop i'm going to put that over here so v epsilon is equal to v plus v that is voltage drop plus uh, the uh, terminal voltage i'll just rearrange the equation to get voltage drop over here so v is equal to what epsilon minus the terminal voltage now from the equation that we did before from what we got before we know that what v is equal to i into r and we know that epsilon is equal to i into r plus r and capital v that is nothing but the terminal voltage is nothing but i into the resistance provided by the circuit now listen up carefully i have to find out what is the internal resistance so internal resistance if i really need the equation what will i get the voltage drop divided by the current simple now what is the voltage drop Voltage drop. We just saw that it is nothing but epsilon minus v. So I'm going to substitute this equation over here. So what? Like first of all, I'll, I'll just write on the given data. I got it as this is what I got. 
Now, what is V? V from this equation is what? Epsilon. That is nothing but the EMF minus the voltage drop. So, I'll just substitute that over here. So, R is equal to epsilon minus voltage drop divided by the current. Now, what is current from this equation? What is current? Current is equal to V by R. Substitute that also over here. So, what will you get? R is equal to epsilon minus V divided by V divided by R. All right. Now, take R to the uh, or you know just rearrange the equation or basically divide this equation so what do you get epsilon divided by r uh, you know divided by yeah so we'll take r to the numerator over here and then again minus v by v into r so v v gets cancelled so what are you gonna get uh wait a second huh r huh r, r gets cancelled so what are you gonna get epsilon wait what did i do now wait, wait. No, no no wait wait once again once again i just huh, blunders Blood, all right, once again. So, yeah, guys, if you just rearrange the equation, what will you get? Once again, now let me just write this over here. So, what will you get? Epsilon minus V whole divided by V divided by R is what you're going to get. All right. So, divide both these equations individually. We'll just divide it individually. What will you get? Uh, epsilon divided by V by R minus of V by R. So, epsilon minus v divided by v gets cancelled into r so we'll get r you can take it common epsilon minus v minus 1 yeah yes so that's it guys that's all rearrange the equation and you'll get, you'll get this now, epsilon minus v uh, minus by v minus 1 into r would be the equation just rearrange the equation all right i just directly did some blunder over there but yeah this is what you're gonna get all right so this is one more equation that you can remember guys again the uh, this is what it is nothing but the internal resistance internal resistance is equal to the EMF of the cell divided by the potential difference minus 1 into R. This is one more equation that you're going to get. All right? So this is another equation that you must remember. All right. So once again, people, to talk about the factors affecting the internal resistance of the cell, one is the surface area of the electrode. The greater the surface area, the lesser would be the resistance as well as you guys know about it because the electrons will have more space to more around. Distance between the electrode, more is the distance, the greater would be the resistance. The nature and the concentration of the electrolyte as well because obviously different material have different type of resistance. And finally, the temperature of the electrolyte as well. The greater the temperature, the more would be the internal resistance. All right. So yeah, this is, this where will this formula help you in life? I have no idea. No. This is the, the only place that you're going to use it is in your 10th uh, standard. That's all. After that, you don't have to use this formula at all. In life, ever. Anyways, so guys, finally, we'll get into the quiz. Now. Finally, let's get into the quiz. People quickly join the Mentimeter people. The code is 63065115. Quickly join the Mentimeter and let's go. Yo, what is the brand of phone? It's, it's uh, OnePlus, the OnePlus. I use a OnePlus phone. Hi Rajne, what's up? Phone charged? Welcome back. I'm very fast. I was going very slow right over there. Okay, do you guys want to do the derivation one more time? It's quite simple. Huh? I, uh, you know, I just have to rearrange the, substitute the values, rearrange the equation and get the answer. But if you want me to do it again, no worries. Towards the end, just remind me once again, I'll do that one more time. Huh? Don't worry. All right. If you want me to go slower, it's okay. Don't worry. All right. So the code is uh, typed out in the chat box itself. The code is 63065115 is the code. All right. Super hot today, now. it's super super hot today. So you know I'm just very humid. 33 degrees Celsius. No wonder. Humidity is like 31 percent, I guess. 33 percent humidity. No wonder. No wonder I'm sitting and sweating today. I can't turn on the fan also because it makes a lot of noise. All right, we will quickly. The code is six three zero six five double one five. I want everyone to be there, people. All of those who are here, please join the Mentimeter as well. I am okay, Rishita. Thank you for asking. How are you doing, da? All right, guys. I'm going to start the quiz then. In five, four, three, two, one. All those who have just joined right now, quickly join the Mentimeter. You'll have enough time. We have about six questions. The code is six three zero six five double one five. That's the code. Join it and take part in the quiz. Here's the question, guys. A battery of EMF three volts supplies current through a circuit in which resistance can be changed. A high resistance voltmeter is connected across the battery. When the current is 1.5 amperes, the voltmeter reads 2.7 volts. Find the internal resistance of the battery. I'll repeat the question again. 
A battery of EMF 3 volts supplies current through a circuit in which resistance can be changed. The high resistance voltmeter, a high resistance voltmeter is connected across the battery. When the current is 1.5 amperes, the voltmeter reads 2.7 volts. Find the internal resistance of the battery. All right. Options 1.5 ohms, 2.5 ohms, 2, 0.2 ohms or 0.5 ohms. Let's go. Let's go people. All those who are just who are, who are here, who are not in the Mentimeter, you can put down the answers in the chat box also people. There's no there's no problem with that as well. You guys, you guys can put it down in the, in the chat box. No worries. It's okay. Yes, I don't know. Thank you. That is the code. 63065115. Let's see who got it right people. Here is your leaderboard. Uh, ja, 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 ja. Three of you guys. Excellent. Excellent people, excellent. Seven of you guys with option A and B and two with option D. However, guys, the right answer is option number C. Now let me just solve this for you guys. First of all, guys, the EMF is given as three volts. The terminal voltage is given as 2.7 volts. Because why? The voltmeter says the reading is 2.7 volt. That means outside the cell, what is the voltage that you're getting? 2.7 volt. So what does what does that make it? That is the terminal voltage. That is 2.7 volt. Current flowing through the circuit is 1.5 amperes. You're supposed to find out what is the internal resistance of the battery. First of all, guys, write on the basic formula. Epsilon, that is terminal voltage, sorry, the potential, uh, the EMF is equal to terminal voltage plus voltage drop. Now, what is the formula for voltage drop? Voltage drop is equal to what? I into small r. So, first of all, it, there are two ways to do it. Either you can directly put this over here and find out, uh, you know, the answer directly. Or what you can do is you can you know find out what is v separately that is small v that is voltage drop separately and then put in the equation to get the same all right so i'm going to do it the second method it'll be much more easier for for you to calculate so 3 minus 2.7 plus v so what is v 3 minus 2.7 which is what it is 0 0.3 volts that is the that is what that is a voltage drop now that you've gotten the voltage drop put it in this equation very simple so v is equal to i into r, I, I into small r so 0 0.3 is equal to current is given as what 1.5 amperes uh, into r so what is r r is equal to 0 0.3 divided by 1.5 multiply with 10 multiply with 10 so what do you get 3 by 15 uh, 3 by 15 so what are you gonna get it's 0 0.2 oops simple simple question that's all or again otherwise you, you don't want to do all this method you want to directly substitute the values that way also you can do it so directly write as epsilon is equal to v plus i into r put the values over here 3 minus 3 is equal to 2 minus 7 plus 1.5 into r this way also simplify it you'll get the exact same answer as 0 0.2 ohms itself that's all that's all that is the answer that is the answer for the first question guys simple question oh, three of you guys three of you guys got it right all you know hurry anyways let's just duplicate dr centipede and call me babu moshe all right all right babuji then you have g then it's uh, anushri rudra from gujarat gatarola the hustler wolfmeister prasoon 10th over enjoy and then rishita as well congratulations guys congratulations i believe we have another question as well yo we have another question people so quickly go back to the mentimeter one more time second question people another numerical so take your time and solve it you have enough time to around do it you have enough time you have more than one minute get it right because if you get it right you have almost beaten 90 percent of the class over there all right the question is this figure shows a circuit with consist which consists of a battery connected in series with a 10 ohm resistor the potential difference across the resistor is mentioned as, me, sorry, measured as 2.5 volts. If the internal resistance of the battery is 2 ohms, find the EMF of the battery. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Confused, Brasun. EMF is still confusing, huh? confusing. Like I told you, know, EMF is nothing but imagine you, have, imagine you buy a new cell. Huh? Imagine you buy a new cell. Imagine you buy a 5 volt cell. That is the EMF of the cell. That is before you connect it to the circuit, before you turn on the switch, before the current flow starts flowing through it. What is the potential difference that the battery claims to provide? That is the EMF of the cell. That is EMF. All right. Once you connect it, what you're actually getting, that is terminal voltage. What is the difference between what they're claiming and what you're getting? That is voltage drop. That's all. All right. Hi there, what's up? Why are you laughing? Why are you guys laughing? Da? Hi, Gautam, what's up? Always right, done. Yo, yo, yo. Let's see how many faces got it right. 
10 of you guys went with option number A because you're too lazy to do it. Six of you guys got the right answer. That is three volts. Congratulations. Why? 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 Are the questions that difficult? It's actually quite easy. Now, okay. First of all, guys, let me just write on the given data. First of all, the resistance, the external resistance is given as 10 ohms. Internal resistance is given as 2 ohms. They've given you the terminal voltage as 2.5 volts. Find out what is the EMF of the cell. This is the question. Now, first of all, write down the given data. So, this is the given data to you for you guys. So, EMF is what? Terminal voltage plus voltage drop. I do not, I do not know the voltage drop. So, calculate the voltage drop. Now, to calculate voltage drop, I need what is the current flowing through the circuit. So, first of all, calculate the current. How will you calculate the current? Resistance is given. Voltage is given. Current is what? Current is equal to V by R. Voltage is 2.5, resistance is 10. So what are you going to get? 0.25 amperes. Simple. Current is 0.25 amperes. The current flowing through the circuit is 0.25 amperes. Now, put it on an equation. Simple. Now. Find out what is the terminal voltage first. Sorry, the voltage drop. So V is given as what? Uh, current is how much? Current is 0.25 into term. What is the internal resistance? Is what two? How much are you going to get, people? 0.25 into two is how much? Huh? 0.25 into 2 is 0.5 if I'm not wrong. People, quickly, 0.25 into 2. How much is it? Hey, 0.25 into 2. How much is it? Quickly, quickly. Calculating. Calculating. 25. How much is it? 5. No, okay, 5. Huh? Sure. All right, 2, 5, 10. 1. 0.5, no, da. How will it be 5? Huh? 0 0.5, no, day. I don't know, day. I was bad here, you were bad with me. Alright, it is. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 volts is what you're getting. Now, put it on the equation now. Simple. What is the what is the terminal voltage? 2.5 plus 0 0.5. What are you gonna get? 3 volts. Tell me the truth. Is this question really tough? Touch your heart and tell me. Cross your hearts and tell me. Is this question actually that tough? Is it is it really is it really that difficult? Oh, no, that is super easy. You just need to remember this one basic formula. That's all. If you remember this one basic formula in Ohm's law, no, you can solve any question related to this case. Any question. That's why I'm showing you the most simplest steps so that you understand what I'm trying to do here. Rather than directly using the formula. See, you can do it even more simpler way. You can directly write this formula. Yeah, what is that? EMF is equal to I into R plus R. We have already seen that. Because what? Voltage is equal to I into R. And here voltage is what? EMF. EMF is equal to I into R plus R. That is the resistance outside and inside the cell. You can directly use this formula also. You will get the answer in two steps. You will get the answer in two steps. But since this is much more easier for you to remember, this one formula is much more easy to remember. That's why I am showing you one step at a time. Stuff seriously, Ziba. It's super easy now. First time solving electrical array, Vaishnavi. Is it? It's all right. It's all right. Now, please solve as many questions as you can. All right, guys. So, people, please make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well. And if you guys want more such amazing sessions on the Vedantu platform to study with the best of the best teachers, you can also enroll into the Vedantu Pro courses right now. Let me tell you what are the advantages. First of all, just like YouTube, you have unlimited number of live sessions and n number of quizzes as well for each of these live sessions as well. And these quizzes will give you an opportunity to compete with your friends, also give you an idea of what are the topics that you are good at and what are the topics that you're bad at so you can prepare your or tailor make your own timetable and your preparations accordingly with this all the sessions are recorded and the recordings are also an interactive recording so such a way that even while watching the replay you can take the quizzes and check out the leaderboards while watching the replay as well and with this we understand that notes are important so you can download all the premium content every single handwritten note all of that can be downloaded and also guys the best part to top it all of every single session with the master teacher you will also have one more set of teacher card as a class teacher to ensure that all of your doubts are cleared inside the class itself real time so unlimited in, in class doubt solving that to real time with that lots and lots of lesson assignments and these lesson assignments are a good preparations or good way of preparing yourself for your boards for your pre-boards for your class test whatever the test that you have these questions would also help you to do that so what are you supposed to do quite simple people so this is the video that is going on right now uh-huh 
first of all hit the like button 59 hey hit the like button subscribe to the channel as well and yes guys what you have to do is basically click on subscribe to vedantu pro right now this link will directly take you to the page here you can check out all the details so let's say that see guys you have three different types of courses for all the grades so you have vedantu light vedantu classic and vedantu plus so automatically coupon code has been applied to all of these so this is for icc 10th that is 10th 9th standard going to 10th standard this is for those people so you can check it over here you can also change whatever grade you are in whichever batch you want or whichever you know uh, syllabus you guys follow you can check that out as well so this is for uh, you know class 1 to class 10 all of that so let's say you are in class 10 and you are uh, going to give your exam in 2022 so icc 21 22 so click on that guys again you can check out all of this so what is the difference between light classic and plus is that in light you have the you have pretty much you know you have live classes test series all of that would be available but the only thing that you don't have is doubt solving so outside the class you have vedantu app inside the vedantu app you can get your doubt solved so vedantu light will not have the doubt solving option and you'll also you'll also not have a personal mentor but vedantu classic will have the doubt solving app so that means inside the class and outside the class also you can get all of your doubts cleared with the, from 8 a.m till night 11 a.m am 11 oh sorry 11 pm you can get whatever doubts you have everything can be cleared within the vedantu app itself and finally you also have vedantu pro plus in the vedantu pro plus you will have a personalized teacher a personal mentor as well who will be there with you from the start till the end of the academic year so the year long pro course is around 27499 for vedantu light vedantu classic is around 35099 and for vedantu pro plus is around 50399 rupees now in case if you go for the one month so you can check out the one month course or you can go for the complete program as well so one month course would be around 2340 that is including the coupon code it will be around 2340 that is for vedantu uh what to say light for vedantu pro it will be around 2970 and vedantu pro uh of for example plus would be 4230 rupees i know price is too much oh. so whichever course you are comfortable with there'll be some coupons uh you know that will be coming up pretty soon so whenever the you know whenever you have these uh discounts and all going on use the coupon code click on the link enroll to the course that's how guys all right and yeah once once you enroll in the course you can check out all the details that you whatever course you're eligible for everything would be over here and you can also check out your sessions that has already happened uh whatever sessions are upcoming you can check it over here whatever is the past sessions you can check that also over here you can check the replays get notes everything would be available in the dashboard itself all right so everything would be given in the description you can just click on it check it out make your decisions accordingly after that all right so that's it people let's get back to the topic the last couple of topics that we have to do so yes guys if you talk about the value for money one last thing i would like to say is this that you are getting the best value for money even though this the course price seems like a lot but per session you're just paying about 11 rupees uh you know for one session which is quite i know quite less because obviously out there it's a far more greater as well these are the batches that are going to be starting for cbsc it's from 26th of april a new batch is starting for cbc 9th and for 10th as well icc is 24th of may and uh, 24th of may for 10th standard for maharashtra 24th of may for j for people who are moving from 10th to 11th standard it will be 26th of april for j batches and for neat that is for uh, you know your uh, i would say medical examinations that will be 26th of april again all of that would be given in the description you can check it out all of that would be there all right anyways guys let's get back to the topic let's finish off this last couple of things electrical energy guys if i ask you this question now what is energy what would you say what is energy according to you guys define energy define energy what is energy first of all come on guys what is energy energy is uh, displacement energy is distance covered energy is velocity energy is acceleration what is energy energy is body of the capacity to do work the ability to do work the capacity to do work is what is called as energy electrical energy is nothing but the energy that is required to move a unit positive charge through a particular circuit or to do some work that the energy that is that uh, that is required by the charge to do some work that is what is called as electrical energy that is what is defined as electrical energy so if i have to go back to the basic stuff that i've already learned we know that current is what current is nothing but what current is a rate of flow of charge that is nothing but q by t q is nothing but charge t is nothing but the time taken so from this i can say that q is equal to what q for rearranging the equation q is equal to i into t 
one basic formula done 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 so charge the amount of charge that is passing through a point now when i say when i say charge i'm talking about the charge particles electrons that is what i'm talking about here all right now we also know that from the from the from the definition of potential difference v is equal to w by q that is nothing but the work done to move a unit positive charge from infinity to a particular point or from one point to another that is what is potential difference so that is nothing but w by q so from this i can say that work done is equal to potential difference on a unit positive charge and what is charge charge is nothing but i into t so w is equal to what v into i into t this is the formula that's all work done is equal to v into i into t simple this is the basic formula that you need to remember when it comes to work done that's all this is the only formula that you need to remember now again guys you can rearrange this equation now for example we know that v is equal to i into r we know that v is equal to i into r from ohm's law so i can write this equation also as w is equal to what v into uh, in place of uh, what to say in place of v i can substitute i r so what will i get i square r t this is one more formula now in place of i i can also write as i is equal to v by r so in place of i i can substitute uh what to say v by r so what will i get w is also equal to v square by r into t we can also write see guys again these are all the formulas that you're deriving depending on what value is given to you so depending on what, let's say for example they have not given you the current they are asking you to find out what is the work done if current is not given to you using potential difference and resistance and time taken or time uh, you know uh, the time uh, to which the current flows through the circuit you can find out what is a uh, what is the work done so it is not necessary that you need all these three values that is voltage current and time taken if you have either of the two values also you can find out the value of uh electric uh, what is it the electrical uh, energy or work done all right so the basic formula work done is equal to q into v you can also write as vit i square rt or v square uh, t by r all right or v square by r into t any of these formulas can be written but again that's what i'm trying to tell you you don't have to break your head to remember all these formula remember this one formula use ohm's law accordingly whichever is according to the numerical given whichever is the known value put that rearrange the equation accordingly and get the answer you don't have to break your head and remember all these formulas that's what i'm trying to say use that one formula rearrange the equation get the others that's all. simple as that all right the next thing is guys electrical power now what is power power is nothing but the rate of doing work in other words power is what work done by time this is the basic definition of work power, power is not nothing but what the rate of doing work or the rate of energy consumption or energy consumed is what is called as power so the formula again what is work done work done is equal to v into i into t we have already seen that energy is nothing but energy or work done is equal to what v into i into t divided by t so t t gets cancelled so what are you going to get v into i so the basic formula that you are going to be using for power is nothing but voltage into current or potential difference into current is the basic formula for power that you will be using another formula for this again rearrange the equation once again v is equal to i into r so you can also write as what i square into r you can also write this as what v uh, you know in place of i if i substitute it as v by r uh, what will you get we will get it as what uh, v square by r into t so either of these formulas again you just have to remember ohm's law remember the formula of the basic formula that is b, b into i and put down the values get the equations that's all so power is equal to v into i v square by r is one more formula i square by r is another formula w into t is the basic formula that you've been studying from grade eighth or seventh you've been studying this rate of doing work work done by time is another formula Car people, yes, clear. Sir, is there any problem in starting eleventh class a little late? No, da. I mean, see, it's going to be a continuation of this. It's not going to be that hard, but still, better not to, uh, better not to delay it. All right, because, uh, you know, you'll find it difficult. Obviously, you'll find it difficult if you uh, delay too too much. Obviously, you'll find it difficult because obviously you'll have a lot. The content will be more, much more. Like you have a lot to study, but it'll be easy, sir. But it'll be too much to cover. So yeah, the better the if you can start from now on, it'll be even better. Start from now on, sir. All right. Yes, for sure, Vijay. One hundred percent. Why not? One hundred percent. You can study. You can self-study and crack GE also. There are so many people who have done it. But you should have the conviction. That's all. You should be convicted. You should have hundred percent conviction that this is what you're going to do. That's all. All right. If you're doing that, then hundred percent you can clear it by yourself. You don't need extra sessions and all. You can just you know watch some videos on YouTube. Refer. Do it by yourself. That's perfectly fine. 
there's nothing wrong in it it's not wrong just because everyone else is doing it does not mean that, that uh, it does not mean that you are any less nothing like that all right anyways guys let's get back to the topic household consumption of electrical energy see people every one of us have would have or would have seen this kind of meters that you have at home now this is a simple meter that measures how much amount of electrical energy is consumed by that household how much amount of electrical energy is consumed electrical energy how much is consumed is what is measured using this meter and basically guys power is what they assign out of power is nothing but what all right it is nothing but uh what is say volt into ampere voltage into ampere volts into ampere which is nothing but watts all right but the problem is this guys if you were to measure in terms of watts you would have gotten a very very big value you would have gotten a very big value so instead of writing in terms of watts we convert it to kilowatt hour this is the uh, what to say this is basically the commercial unit of energy which is nothing but kilowatt hour because to represent all that energy consumed in terms of watt you would have gotten a very very big value like in terms of billions and crores is what you would have got so in to make it a much more simpler value so that you can easily refer to it that is why we represent in terms of kilowatt hour now 1 kilowatt hour 1 kilowatt is equal to 1000 watt and 1 hour is equal to 3600 hours or sorry 3600 seconds now 1 hour is equal to 3600 seconds so 1000 into 3600 if you multiply it you will get it in terms of joules so 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 to the power of 6 joules or you can write it as 36 into 10 to the power of 5 Joules, but generally we write it as 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joules itself. All right, so 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joules is what you are going to get. That is the value for one kilowatt hour. Why again in terms of joules? Because joules is the SI unit of energy. So you can, if you are asked to represent it in terms of joules, or let's say you have given, they have given you the value in terms of joules, and they are asking you to convert it to kilowatt hour. Divide the value by 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joules. That's all. So you just uh, what do one thing is after the session is done, just take a look at your meter don't go too close but yes guys if you just look at the value guys they would have always mentioned it in terms of kilowatt hour so they don't mention it in terms of joules or watts no they mention it in terms of kilowatt hour because that is the commercial unit of energy all right so again guys this would just basically measure how much electrical energy is consumed so the cost if you want to find out how much you are being charged let's say you know you get this electricity bill no 1000 rupees 2000 rupees 800 rupees how do we calculate it whatever is the electrical energy Energy consumed in terms of kilowatt hour. Multiply that with the cost for one kilowatt hour per kilowatt hour. What is the cost? Is it three rupees, four rupees, depending on one place to another, whatever it is. Multiply that, you will get the uh, value or how much is that? Uh, I want to say how much are you charged? Per month, you'll be able to understand that. So again, guys, if you talk about watt hour, one watt hour is equal to three thousand six hundred joules. One kilowatt hour is equal to three point six hundred into the power of six joules because one kilowatt is equal to one thousand watts. All right, and yeah, this is basically the basic conversions that you need to remember. All right, guys, so let's do another question. Quickly, quickly. So the power, the commercial unit of power is kilowatt hour. Yes, yes, yes. Now the commercial unit of power is kilowatt hour. It's all right. The commercial unit of energy is kilowatt hour, not power. Energy is kilowatt hour. All right. power is watts power is watts or kilowatts but energy is kilowatt hour when you say kilowatt hour that is energy all right because energy is what the rate remember what is the amount of work done again so i can go back to the same thing when you talk about energy energy and work done is pretty much the same thing. what is the what is energy it is the capacity to work so basically the formula remains the same vit is a basic formula over there also energy is also same work done the formula is also same vit itself all right so go back to the formula all right guys anyways so people here is your third question go back to the question again quickly join the mentimeter all those who have just quit 63065115 is the code so quickly join guys once again uh you have about 1 minute to solve this question but yes guys again it's a numerical so take your time and solve it the question is this an electrical appliance having a resistor of 200 ohms is operated at 200 volts calculate the energy consumed by the appliance in 5 minutes in terms of joules options 6000 joules 3600 sorry 36000 joules 3600 joules or 60000 joules yeah electrical appliance having a resistance of 200 ohms is operated at 200 volts calculate the energy consumed by the appliance in 5 minutes in terms of joules that let's go got it awesome trish awesome da. anyone else guys anyone else who has a doubt da? so we'll be conducting ninth standard class we'll be starting it from next week da. next week the classes will be starting for ninth standard that is all people moving from 8 to 9th make sure you subscribe because we'll be starting it from next week and all people moving from 9th to 10th also will be starting from next week so subscribe
don't forget hit the bell icon so you get notified also all right hey yes five of you guys were able to give the right answer yeah excellent 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 not bad not bad people but yes that, that is very very bad not bad it's all areas so we were let me just write on the given data first resistance is given as 200 ohms voltage is given as 200 volts and they've given you the time taken as five minutes now guys they've asked you to convert it in terms of joules so convert this to seconds first so 5 into 60 that's how much 5 6 30 is 300 seconds is what you have now power is what power is equal to voltage into so you're supposed to calculate what is the what is the energy consumed sorry not power you're supposed to calculate what is the energy consumed sorry 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 not power energy consumed is what you're asking no so vit is the basic formula v into i into t energy consumed is what v into i into t so what is v v is nothing but 200 into 200 uh, sorry uh, they've not given you the current also so again rearrange the equation rearrange the equation to get i so what is i i is equal to v by r v is 200 divided by 200 so that's one so you can just write it over here as one itself into 300 three twos are six uh zero 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 sixty thousand sixty thousand what joules simple so conversion second is needed if yes 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 very much needed uh, very much needed yeah either you can use this formula directly or in place of i you can just write it as in place of i we can write it as what v is equal to v square by r into t sorry v square into r into t not by r v square sorry v square by r you know ha huh, you're substituting for i no so v square by r into t either that or you can just directly substitute the value find out what is the value of current first substitute the value over there and get it either way, either way it's correct all right either way use whichever formula you're comfortable with use that all right so the answer you'll get it as 60000 joules itself all right so here they've used it as v square by r into t itself all right so whichever way is comfortable use that next one is the fourth question come on come on, come on quickly all right four minutes left and we have another topic to do also so quickly guys anyways a lot of you guys unfortunately chose the wrong answer or it says duplicate boom ba babuji uh, ansh Shruti, okay, okay. The, the leaderboard looks really bad today, right? Yes. And this is duplicate on the first follow by Ria, then it's ba Babushay, followed by uh, Prasoon, class 10 son, Shruti, Abhinav, Jasmine, Chinmay, and Trisha. Congratulations. High five, high five to you too. Next one is the fourth question. I know that all the questions are hard because you know there are a lot of numericals given, but still, guys, give your best. Time. It's okay even if you get it wrong, but please understand where you're going wrong so you don't repeat the same mistake in your exams if in case you have exams. Next one. An electric bulb of resistance 500 ohms draws current of 0.4 amperes from the source. Calculate the power of the bulb and the potential difference at its ends. The power as well as the potential difference. Both calculate them. So options 40 watts and 100 volts, 80 watts and 200 volts, 120 watts and 220 volts, 240 volts or 80 watts and 80 volts. Let's go guys, come on. Simple question, that is very simple. Hi energy, what's up? So do we have to convert time to seconds or let it be in minutes? No, if, you, if they have asked you in terms of joules, then you have to convert it to seconds now. If, if they ask you in terms of joules, you have to convert it to seconds itself. Don't leave it in terms of minutes. All right. And if they have asked you in terms of kilowatt, uh, sorry, kilowatt hour, then convert it to hours. Convert that minute to hours. Here they've asked you in terms of joules. So convert it to seconds. Very much needed. All right. It's good. Eight. Arre, awesome Gautam. High five, high five. Awesome. Na? 81.98. Awesome. Na? Hi, Aaron. What's up, buddy? I'm Pakka Drisha. All right, all right. It is eight of you guys were able to give the right answer. Congratulations. Five and five each bodyguards for A and B. But unfortunately, guys, the right answer is option V. Once again, now how do you solve it? Power is equal to voltage into current. Voltage is given as what? Voltage, you do not know. Substitute the value over here. So V is equal to I into R. So put that over here. So I square R is the formula now. So 0 0.4 into 0 0.4 into 500. How much is that? 0 0.4 into 0 0.4 is 0 0.16 into 500. How much is that? 0 0.16 into 500. How much people? Quickly now. 0 0.4. 0 0.16 into 500 is how much? Quickly, quickly, quickly. How much is it? 0 0.16 0 0.16 into 500 is 80 watts. No, 80 watts again. I think 80 watts is what you're gonna get. All right, power is 80 watts now. Now to talk about the potential difference. This is the first part of the question. Potential difference again. Potential V is equal to I into R. I is uh, I is what? I is 0 0.4 uh, into 500. 200 volts. That's all. 200 i think you'll get it as 200 itself no 200 right 200 volts and 80 watts that's all simple questions and all 
बच्चा लेवल को एसेस एवरीथिंग एंड यू गाइस आर गोइंग रॉन्ग इन दैट ऑल राइट एनीस लास्ट टॉपिक इज लास्ट टॉपिक इज हीटिंग इफेक्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करंट द फार्मूला फॉर हीटिंग इफेक्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करंट इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम एज फॉर पावर सॉरी वर्क डन एज वेल एज फॉर एनर्जी बिकॉज़ ही इज द थिंग गाइस व्हाटएवर इज सी वी नो ओके लेट्स टेक अ बैड थिंग the battery is basically doing some work to push the charge from one end to another from the negative terminal to the positive terminal it's doing some work so what is that work done v into q how because again v is equal to q, the work done on a unit charge we have already seen that so w is equal to what v into q now here's the thing whatever is the work done by the battery that is equal to the energy gained by the charges because obviously what where is that work done work work is done on the charges to push it from one i uh, would say throughout the entire circuit so whatever is the work done by the battery is equal to the energy gained by the charges and that is equal to the energy lost by the in the form of heat because when when the electrons are flowing because of collision there will be because of the resistance basically there is heat in, there is energy lost in the form of heat so whatever is the energy gained by the charges that is equal to the work done by the battery and that is in turn equal to the energy lost in the form of heat so in other words i can say that the energy lost in the form of heat is equal to work done work done which is equal to what v into q so what i'm going to do is i am going to divide and multiply by t all right so just to remove q i'm going to divide and multiply by t so what do you get v into q by t into t so what is q by t i is equal to q by t so i can substitute this word v into i into t so in other words guys e that is energy lost in the form of heat is equal to the same as what is the work done formula what is it v into i it's the exact same formula so i can also write in place of e i can write it as h which is nothing but heat generated so in place of e i'll just replace with h it's the exact same thing remember this guys work done is also v into i into t the energy is also v into i into t the heat energy that that is you know heat energy generated is also v into i into t so it's the exact same formula because why because the work done by the battery is equal to the energy gained by the charges and what are the energy gained by the charges that is also the energy lost in the form of heat as well so again guys rearranging the equation in place of v you can substitute uh, v is equal to i into r so you can write this formula in place of y you can write as i square rt which is also known as the joule's law of heat all right this is this formula is what is called as joule's law of heat that's all i square rt simple again v is equal to i into r i square rt that's all so again again if you it's the exact same thing written in terms of words so heat produced by a circuit is square of the current that is if the current increases by let's say a factor of 2 then the heat energy produced would be increased by a factor of 4 or i can say that if the heat energy increases increased by a factor of 4 then the current has increased by a factor of 2 that is it's square of the current all right and it is directly proportional to the resistance it is also directly proportional to the time for which the current flows through the circuit all right and one last thing is the power rating now uh, we've already seen this but again uh, power rating uh, for example if i have if i have a simple appliance they would have written what is the power power rating of the appliance they would have written what is the voltage the uh, you know current the uh, frequency if it is ac dc whatever it is they would have mentioned all of that so if i have uh, if i have an appliance from the ratings that is given at the back of the appliance we can calculate what is the resistance of the filament again how p is equal to v into i so what is i if let's say that given the voltage what is i i is i is nothing but v by r so v square by r so what is r r is equal to v square by p simple so using the power rating as well as the square of the uh voltage i can find out what is the resistance of the filament and also can find out what is the safe limit for which the appliance can be worked that is if I, from this equation i can also find out what is i i is equal to what p by v so either of these so using these values that that is that is given to me on the back of a simple appliance i can calculate the safe safe limit of the current that i can work with and what is the resistance by offered by that circuit as well so this is the formula guys r is equal to voltage rating of the appliance the square of the voltage rating by the appliance divided by power how did i get this using the same basic formula now again guys i am not by hearting this formula look look at this none of these formulas i have by hearted and i'm i'm vomiting it no 
all these formulas you can easily derive it just by knowing the basic formula that is what i'm trying to convey to you guys you don't have to by heart every single formula that is given in this chapter you just need to remember the basic major formulas and then use ohm's law to substitute the values and get the values accordingly all you have to do is that so from that you can get that uh, power rate of the resistance of filament can be found by the voltage rating of the square of the voltage rating of the appliance divided by the power rating of the appliance so in the same way guys current is what p by v so the power rating of the appliance divided by the voltage will give you what is the maximum limit of current that the safe limit of the current that it can work with all right the safe current of the appliance i is equal to power rating of the appliance divided by the voltage rate that's all simple all right thank you all right so guys let's do the last two quiz questions i think there are two more questions let's quickly do it the last two questions are quickly join the mentimeter last two questions let's finish it off I think you'll get around one minute change for these questions. Also, uh, luckily, a couple of you guys chose the right answer for the last question. So, Ria, Prasun, Shruti, Chinmay, Trisha, and Nemo, congratulations. Well done, well done, well done. Ria goes on the job. Second is Anupsa's duplicate. Then it's uh, Prasun, Shruti was the faster answer. Chinmay, Trisha, uh, ba Babuji. Then it's Ansh, Nemo, and Abhinav. Next question is the fifth question. 90% of the questions are already done. Fifth question, here we go. Let's go, let's go. Last two questions. Let's quickly do it. Come on. So is G, G giving G help if I want to become a research scientist in physics? Why not? Why not? Sure, hundred percent you can. Okay, uh, here's the question: An electric toaster draws current of eight amperes in a circuit with sources of voltages two hundred twenty volts. If if it is used for two hours, find the cost of operating the toaster if the cost of electrical energy is four point five zero rupees per kilowatt hour. Options rupees four point five zero, rupees twelve point five six, rupees fifteen point eight six eight four or twenty rupees. Let's go, let's go. See now you can do it in two ways. If you want to become a research scientist, you have to do your PhD. So there are two ways to do it. Either you can do your engineering then uh, get into integrated phd or you can do ms a uh, bsc msc and then phd there are two ways to do it if you are going with bsc msc then you don't have to give your ge but if you want to go with uh, in terms of engineering then you can uh, do your engineering first in uh, you know a prestigious iit college that would definitely uh, you know uh, be boosted by your ge score so depending on your ge score you'll get a different uh, you know uh, college get into that college complete your engineering then do integrated phd or get into iisc or something and then become a research fellowship and then do your research that way also so there are two ways to do it it's not there's only one there's not only one way to go about this all right <sighs> it's all right person i'll be right here i'll be right here it's okay you can still come and talk to me at times. Eight of you guys were able to give the right answer. Congratulations. I am actually happy for that. Finally, some good news. So let me just quickly solve this question. Now, first of all, guys, what and all is given? So you're supposed to find out what is the cost, right? So first of all, if you want to find out the cost, you have to calculate what is the energy consumed. And what is the formula for energy consumed? V into I into T. So what is the voltage? 220. Current is given as 8 amperes. And time is given as 2 hours. So multiply that with 2. So how much is that? Now, 440 into 8 how much is that guys 440 into 8 how much is that 440 into 8 quickly quickly in the chat box 440 into 8 i know that you guys have calculators with you or you guys are, your brains are calculators 440 into 8 is how much 220 into 8 into 8 into 2 how much is that guys 0 16 1 16 1 uh, how much is that how much 3520 all right i'm gonna go with what abhinav says 3520 what 3520 what are all right now convert this to kilowatt hour so divide this by thousand divide this by thousand to convert to kilowatt hour so that's how much 3.520 kilowatt hour now multiply if you want to find out the cost so cost is equal to what energy into uh, the cost per unit uh, per uh, kilowatt hour so and uh, 3.520 into 4.50 you'll get us 15 point something 15 point eight something you'll get how much is that 15.84. This is what you're gonna Voila! Voila, people! Uh, why should we have already done that in the previous session? Now? Combination of resistors we have already done in the previous session. This is the second part of one shot. So in the first part, I completed combination of resistors. So please make sure that you go through that. Alright. Last question is last and the final question. Now that's it. 
Electricity is done. Last and the final question. Here is your leaderboard by the way, people. Ria still on top, I believe, followed by Anupsa's duplicate. Then it's uh, uh, Prasoon. Both of them are the fastest ones. Prasoon and Anupsa's duplicate. Then it's Shruti. Jasmine, Chinmay, Earthman, Trisha, uh, Babuji, and uh, Shubhi as well. Congratulations. Last and the final question for today, people. Let's finish it off with a bang. I hope that this question, at least, majority would get it right because today's quiz has been one of the most saddest quiz of all time. All right, anyways, a current of 2 amperes passes through a coil of resistance 7. 25 ohm for in for two minutes. How much heat is produced? How much charge is passed through the resistance? How much charge passes through the resistance and how much heat is also heat energy is produced? Options 36,000 joules and 240 coulombs, 3,600 joules and 24 coulombs, 18,000 joules and 120 coulombs, or 24,000 joules and 240 coulombs. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Yeah, please go through that device. Now. The first part of that I've done it. Alright, so make sure that you check that out. Hi Girdi, are right on time to the last question you've reached it thank you guys thank you hit that like button <laughs> how to become rdo revenue district officer uh i think you'll have to write your upsc for that i'm not really sure though revenue district officer i think you'll have to you know i think that goes by upsc not really sure though is it upsc i think it should be upsc it should come under upsc itself not really sure though but you'll have to check it out though. Clat? I've not I've not heard about clat. What is clat? Not, not really sure. So how do you guess my name already? Talent. <laughs> All right, 18 seconds. 18 seconds. Quickly now. 10 physics is easy. No, I know. I know. It isn't exactly. Now you're feeling it is easy, no? Because you've moved. To, now no more exam also. Now you're saying it's easy. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, we've been doing good, so I'm pretty sure you find it very easy. So it's okay. All right. Anyways, guys, done. Awesome people, here we go. It is, it is, it is, it is 10 of you guys. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys made it to come out to get this question right because that you went with the first option directly. But nonetheless, congratulations, guys. How to solve this question is quite easy. So, heat energy produced H is equal to what again? VIT is the basic formula. Now, I do not know what is the voltage given, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna substitute V is equal to I into R over here. So I'm gonna use it as what I square RT which is basically Joule's law of heating. So I square is given as two to the power two into 75 into two minutes. So convert that to seconds because you have to convert it to, you have to try it into the Joules. So two into 60, that's 120 seconds. So into 120, how much is that guys? Four into 75 into 120, you'll get it as 36,000 Joules, right? Multiply this, you'll get it as 36,000 Joules. Now to find out how much charge is passing through other resistance. So how do you find out Q now? So the question is how do you find out the okay how do you find out the charge all right so again guys uh, i is equal to q by t i is given as what 2 amperes time is given as 120 seconds so q is equal to what 2 into 120 4 coulombs 240 coulombs that's all that is the answer guys 36,000 joules and 240 coulombs that's all that's all common law okay law all right all right clat I've never heard of it huh? Nice, interesting name. Anyways, guys, so that is the answer. Now, congratulations, 36,000 joules and 260 coulombs. Congratulations, well done. At least the last question we got more than 50% of the class, I believe. Anyways, everyone, pretty much everyone in the chat box got it right. I mean, the sorry, the top fastest fingers list. Except for Anupsa's duplicate and Shruti, I believe. Rhea is the winner for today. Congratulations, Rhea ji. Well done. Second is Prasoon. Third is Anupsa's duplicate. Fourth is Shruti. Fifth is Jasmine. Then it's Shinmai. Then it's Earthman, Trisha, Shubhi and Vaishnavi. Congratulations, guys. Well done. Keep up good work. Absolutely spectacular. That is all for today, guys. That's all for today. Okay, that's it, guys. That's all. If you have any doubts, guys, this is the time for you to put it on. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That's all. Yes. Once again, let me just clear the doubts now. Law, I, I do not know. I'm not really aware of law though. I'm not really, I don't have any friends in law. Uh, so I'm not really much sure about law. None of my friends are lawyers. None of my friends are lawyers. So if I ever get in trouble, I do not know. I'll probably call you Trisha. <laughs> yeah, I'll check it out. Today at least I'll try to check it out for sure. All right. I'm really sorry. No, I'm really sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Nidhi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's all right, Datasha. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you, Arun. Thank you. Arun. That's all, guys. That's all for today. Is it? Understood everything? That's all. I show you. High five. If you understood everything, high five. VIP ICSC. Yeah, guys, uh, we'll be coming up with, I think, this week, I'll be coming up with um, chapter-wise quiz for entire ICSC. We will be doing 
the whole thing on menti so make sure that you attend that also subscribe subscribe to the channel yeah bye bye ziba take care so yeah guys anything else anything else that you would like to ask me i know that a lot of you guys have career doubts that is what do i do next so if you have any doubts like that i'll be taking up a session for that also on this saturday on this saturday sunday the session will be coming out so sunday will be talking about what to do next all right so what what are your what are your options that you have because i a lot of you guys are asking for that so for sure we'll have a session on that as well i know that there are a lot of a lot of channels that is doing the same thing but yeah whatever i can do from my side i'll try to do that to give you a little bit of clarity at least the more you the more information that you have the better it is so you can make a wiser choice there because obviously you know the better information that you have the better uh would be your choice as well so we'll try to do that yeah or right, a sprint will do sprint is already done not a sprint x is already done sprint x for 10 is already done icc and cvc is already done so even uh, for cvc 10 ninth is also done yeah all right it's all right it's all right nidhi ji it's all right it's okay it's okay <laughs> all right anyways please. take care of it now then bye bye people have a great evening ahead thank you for joining catch you guys soon do not forget to subscribe to the channel be a part of the squad enjoy your life have a great evening ahead have a great life ahead good luck for your whichever grade you are in we are you're moving forward to give you 100% be your best version do not take it lightly always 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 remember that we are here for help for your help whatever it is that you need you can reach out to me personally as well so take care of yourself stay safe until then bye bye people take care see you all good day guys good day bye see you all